up people and welcome to vlogmas day 23 the penultimate episode today i'm going to show you everything that i made in 2021 i have it all here on this rack and so i'm going to go through one by one from the beginning tell you the good the bad and everything in between so let's get started the first thing that i made in 2021 is this vogue 1680 i made it out of a rayon chali from vogue fabric store and to be honest, this isn't my favorite make of the year. I made a size 20 and I kind of forgot that Rayon Chali, it sort of grows when you sew it. And so it turned out a little bit big. And then I also feel like the print on the fabric didn't quite match the design of the pattern as good as it could have. I think the print's kind of busy and the design is also kind of busy. There's an overlay, there's the twist, there's a peplum, there's the deep V. It's just kind of a lot all put together. And so, it's not my favorite, but there you go. The second thing that I made in January was this Vogue 9315. And this is also a rayon chali. I made a size 18 for this one. So I went down a size because I knew it might grow while I sewed it. And this one actually came out a little bit small. So it kind of didn't work out the way I thought, but I love the design of this pattern. It's kind of a cropped style and it has these really long ties. Um, that wrap around um, and makes this really big bow in the front. I think it's really cute. It also has these really adorable ruffle sleeves. And I made it in January and I remember thinking, why are you making a top like this in January? But it really got me excited for the spring and summer to come. So I really like this one, even though it came out a little bit small. And I love a wrap top, always love a wrap top. This is the third thing that I made this year. This is Butterick 6378. I made this as an, in an 18 as well. I made this in February and I just love the design of this one. This is a crinkle rayon, also from Vogue Fabric Store actually. The first three things I made are all from the same fabric shop. And so it's just re a really casual sort of vibe, very boho style with the loose fitting sleeves. They're elasticated here, little tie at the front. And this is just a really easy top to wear and I really love this one. So in February, I got my very first serger, and this is my very first serger project. This is McCall's 7975. I made it in a large. It's in a sweater knit from Minerva.com. I really love the orange. I love orange, so um, it works out well for me. And I also love a knot in the front of anything. So I love the design of this sweater. Like I said, it was my first serger project, so I kind of bungled the neckline a little bit and then I tried to fix it and then it ended up just being sort of too wide and uneven. So I wear it around the house, but uh, yeah, definitely more of a practice garment than anything else. But I still really love the fabric and I love the color and the style. And so uh, that works for me. This was the second thing that I made with my serger. This is the Soho 7 Toaster Sweater version 2, I believe. And I made it out of this French Terry from Girl Charlie. And I really love the large polka dots. Uh, they're oversized and so it's really fun to wear. I always get compliments on it when I wear it. I really love the Soho 7 Toaster Sweaters. I've made both of them so far. Uh, the second one, will you'll be seeing it shortly. I really love the neckline on this one and the fabric that I chose and I think it just came out really well. Uh, next time I make it, I think I might need to do a forward shoulder adjustment though because it kind of feels like it's strangling me just a tad. This is Vogue 9330 and I made this one out of a sweatshirt fleece from Girl Charlie and I am obsessed with the huge neckline on this one. It's so cozy. I wear it around the house all the time. It's just really oversized and loose, and since it's sweatshirt fleece, it's really fuzzy on the inside. I love the oatmeal color, and I think this was a really good make. Next time, I might size down because it is quite oversized, um, but yeah, it's just a really cozy one. You guys might recognize this one. This is a True Bias Nico top, one of my favorite patterns, one of the few patterns I've actually repeated. I made this one out of a rib knit from So So English and I absolutely love the Nico pattern. It's one of my favorites, like I said, and so this one gets a lot of wear in my closet. One of my favorite makes of 2021. Next up, this is McCall 7946. That is 
barely McCall 7946 because I hacked it so much. Um, I made it out of this seven berry cotton with this really sweet felt floral print. And I pretty much went off the pattern as much as you can. Um, instead, of, it's supposed to be a dress. I turned it into a shirt. This was my very first attempt at shearing. And um, I think the pattern actually has you make casings for elastic and that's how you get um, kind of an elasticated look up here. But I went ahead and tried my hand at uh, real shearing with elastic thread and this is the result. It's not perfect by any means, but I really love this style of top. It's really cute. I'm really hoping to do more shearing next year. In June, I made the Friday Pattern Company Ilford jacket. Uh, this is actually a wearable muslin that I made out of quilting cotton because I wanted to test the pattern. And um, it's really, I've never worn it because it actually doesn't fit that great. Um, there's some weird things happening around the underarm. Um, and I never revisited the pattern again, but I wanted to show it to you because it is a finished garment uh, for the year. And yeah, that's that. <laughs> Also in July, I made the Wilder Gown, a classic, and I love this one. I made it out of this navy blue bubble crepe from Minerva, and it is just so flowy. It's so comfortable. It's just, it's an amazing design, and I spent a lot of time making a couple muslins to get it to fit around the shoulders, so I'm really proud of how that turned out. So um, every time I put a lot of work into something, I'm just that much more happy with it, and so uh, yeah, that's the wild you're down. Okay, this is my McCall's 7969 that I made out of this cotton poly fabric with these beautiful purple flowers on it. I even made a matching scrunchie to go with it because I'm extra like that. And I made an uh, in between a size large and an extra large for this one. Um, even though it's really, really loose fitting, it's super comfortable, but I felt like the extra large wasn't quite right. The large wasn't quite right, so I made it in between. Um, it was just right. So uh, yeah, I really love how uh, just really girly this is. It's a little bit outside of my normal uh, style, but I'm really glad I tried it because the pattern is so comfortable and I'm excited to make it in other colors, uh, maybe in this coming year. This is the Pattern Scout Comfy Lounge Set that I made out of a double brush polyester from So So English. And this is also a pattern that I've repeated this year. I absolutely love it. It's drafted for someone who's 5'9 and I'm 5'8. And so that works out for me because there's not a lot of patterns drafted for people with my height. Um, I made a little short set to go with it and I wear it to sleep all the time. I still need to clip off some of the serger threads here, but uh, yeah, I absolutely love this one and it's so comfortable and double brush polyester is, it's just so soft. And if you've never sewn with it, you need to because it's super, super soft. This is a vintage pattern. This is Simplicity 7941. I made this for the hashtag sew your birthday challenge this year. And so the main idea was to sew a pattern from the year of your birth or something inspired by the year of your birth. So I went on Etsy and I found a pattern um, that was made in 1986 and I bought it and I made it out of this uh, poly, poly, poly cotton uh, gingham from Minerva and uh, I really love how this one came out. Again, super comfortable. I think it actually looks pretty modern for being a 1980s pattern. It has this little ruffle on the bottom, this really pretty scoop yoke at the top, a little waist tie, and it's a really great little summer dress. And I even used my machine's lettering to put Katie, circa 1986 in the yoke. So, so I really like this one and I'm sure I'll get a lot of use out of it in the future and it'll always remind me of the year of my birth. <laughs> Next up, this is the French Navy Stellan tee and I made it out of this performance fabric um, as a workout top. But to be honest, the fit is not great on this one. I didn't make any modifications. I made it extra, extra large based on the uh, size chart. And it's supposed to just be a really boxy uh, t-shirt with a drop shoulder, but it's just not quite right on me. And so I might revisit this pattern in the future and um, see if I can modify it to fit a little bit better, but it's fine for working out at home. This is my second Nico top of the year. And I made this out of another rib knit, this time in a mustard yellow color. And I did a lettuce edge on the hems and there's not much more to say about it than I love it. I still love it and I'll probably continue to love it forever. <laughs> 
So this was my Halloween top. I took the peppermint peplum top and I altered it quite a bit to make it fit me. And I made it out of this beautiful burnt orange uh, color and it has these cute little cats and moons and stars on it. So it's a little bit festive for October and the Halloween season. And I just love how this one came out. It's a really great layering piece. You can wear a black turtleneck under it and it just feels very October. This is my second toaster sweater of the year. This is version one. It's a little bit different than version two. It has a raglan sleeve and a collar that kind of, or a neckline that kind of stands up. I made it out of this textured stretch knit from Minerva in this ivory color. And this one just gives me really upscale athleisure vibes. It's a little bit sporty. And so I really like that style and uh, I really love how this one came out. In December, I made this Marlowe sweater and I still actually need to put the buttons on it. I have them on the way from Etsy. I ordered some uh, leather buttons for it, but I made this out of this rust colored uh, textured stretch knit from Minerva as well, just like this one. And this is just a really cozy grandpa cardigan and I really love this style. It's really oversized. Like I said, it's super cozy and I can't wait to get the buttons on it so I can actually wear it. Last but not least, my second Pattern Scout Comfy Lounge Set of the Year, this time in pants with this festive Christmas print. I made this one for the I'm So Festive hashtag challenge. And also in a double brush polyester, really cozy. Can't say anything more about it other than love this pattern, it's super cozy. And it made me feel very festive when I was sewing it. I also did the lettuce edge hem on this one. I love a lettuce edge hem. Um, it's so quick and easy to do, and I think it's really, really cute. Well, that is everything I made in 2021. There is going to be one more make though, and it's not on this rack because I'm gonna finish it tonight. And that's my McCall's 7974 uh, for my Christmas dress. Um, and so stay tuned tomorrow. I'm gonna be revealing that uh, in the very last Vlogmas. So yeah, 20 garments this year. I'm really proud of my progress and what I made this year. Um, thinking about things from the beginning to the end. I think I can really see how my sewing skills improved throughout the year. And so, yeah, I'm really excited to go into 2022 and see what my sewing journey holds. So that's all for you today. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you tomorrow for the very last day of Vlogmas, Vlogmas day 24.